The most glamorous event in flat racing is here. Yes, Royal Ascot is back, and so is Michael Wilson, who's not as glamorous, but he's back. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna play a little game of fun versus fact. I'm obviously fun, and Michael is fact. So the we're gonna go fact, through yeah. the meetings on Friday and Saturday. So first up, Friday's meeting. Who have you gone for the first race? Uh, so the first couple of days have been pretty hard, actually. Some outsiders. Uh, winning um, main addition for me in the 230 it's the albany uh, she's two from two for mark johnson the time that she did this is the fact bit the boring bit yeah. the time that she did at windsor was very very good actually she had a strong closing sectional boring fact um, and also the style of how his horses run they often go from the front which for a two-year-old at the track uh, could be a positive so yeah main addition for me in the 230. well i've gone for i haven't really got much um reasoning behind this but i've gone for no more regrets <laughs> Just like and any reason at all? <laughs> yeah. So I don't have a repeat of the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so for the 305 race, Michael, what fact have you got for us? Uh, fact is the combination of Charlie Appleby and William Buick. They've already teamed up this season to win the Derby. They're having an absolutely fantastic time. Um, an old Persian is stepping up from 10 furlongs to a mile and a half. And that looks as though it might suit him against horses that in recent weeks have had uh, some hard races, should we say. So it could come here a little bit fresher and a really strong team, they're, they're on absolute form. So my fact one is, uh, is Old Persian in the 305. Nice, and my fun is alternative fact, for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I see what you've done there. <laughs> you see, yeah. you see, you see. Yeah. Logic behind that one. And for the 340 race, you've got to go So Sioux Nation, uh, siding with Aidan O'Brien, uh, won at the meeting last year, and we see time after time horses that can perform well at Royal Alaska. There's a lot of pomp and ceremony. They tend to handle the conditions really well. Um, so Sioux Nation, uh, word on the street was did a really strong piece of work um, the other day. A pretty fast horse um, and ticks all the boxes. So yeah, Sioux Nation for me for, for Aiden O'Brien. Sioux Nation for Sport Nation. Sioux Nation for Sport Nation. Yeah. <laughs> My fun fact is actually heartache. <laughs> Again. Is no that tied into no more regrets or anything like <laughs> yeah. that? No, I'm not going down that route. Um, and what about the race? Uh, well, Clemmy again, um, she disappointed last time out, uh, but Aidan O'Brien has always had um, sort of quite a, a strong feel for this horse. She's always had a big reputation. Um, it's not a strong selection, but I th actually think we agree that. Yeah, that we agree we? with Clemmy. Yeah, Good. Okay. I love that. Yeah, full 20, Clemmy. <laughs> Clemmy, Clemmy. And next one, we're going to go on to Saturday's race card. So, who have you gone for the first? Uh, the first race, Cardini. Um, so, he has actually won a race yet, so he comes here as a maiden. Um, but the same connections won this with Churchill um, previously was also a maiden coming into this race. So they're actually, most of these horses are stepping up to seven furlongs for the first time. So you don't know how good they are at the distance. And it might just be um, that that extra furlong um, ticks all the boxes for Cardini. Why are you smiling at me? What have you got? What's your fun selection? <laughs> Must see the dock. Yeah. Hopefully the horse doesn't have to see the yeah. dock. I might have to after my no regrets this weekend. Must check. <laughs> <laughs> so Cardini versus must see the dog, yeah. and hopefully no regrets. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> Next uh, race. Uh, on three three oh five. Crystal Ocean, I think, is going to be the banker for a lot of people um, on Saturday. It's a short price favourite. Um, it's the perfect race for it. Um, and like I say, although it's prominent in the market, has always been this will have been the target for a long time. Um, so I think this will be the one where the top half has got up in the winner's enclosure um, if it gets the job done. So Crystal Ocean, yeah, in the 305. What do you think of my pick? I've gone for Defoe. Defoe! Defoe! Yeah. I'm not a Bomber fan. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? He's, he's a horse that Connections have always said, you know, he's, he's the real deal, you know. Um, and it could be that this is the sort of platform where it's a big day. He's a talented horse, you know. Um, he's got Crystal Ocean to beat, but... Yeah, I think I'll hear you cheering, Defoe! Defoe! All the way from the Sport Nation <laughs> offices if that one goes in. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for my next pick in the next race, but who's you got? Uh, one that I thought that you might go for actually in the 340, a Wesley Ward two-year-old. Um, it's always worth siding with these horses. Moonlight Romance. So, Aww. yeah, I know. I'm, I'm not a romantic, Michael. I wouldn't have gone for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, in that case, I'll, I'll stick with Moonlight Romance. And if you're not a romantic and you don't like the horse, I dread to think what you've gone for here. <laughs> Jungle in the bungle. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, okay, fine. I'm not going to go into detail with that one, but... Sure, okay. Uh, rounding things off in the 420, um, I think I think Saturday could be one for the good for the good things. Um, Harry Angel and the Diamond Jubilee. He ran a really good race here last year in the Commonwealth Cup, uh, beaten by Caravaggio. The horse that was third blue point on the King's Stand on Tuesday, I think all roads have naturally led um, to this race. He's 
probably the best sprinter um, that we've got in the country at the moment. I think something will probably have to go wrong for him not to win. Um, so Harry Angel to win, and also I like the Tin Man each way. Uh, he won this race last year. And James Fanshawe's sprinters are always worth noting Asker. So I'm drawing a line under my facts now. Okay. Where's the fun? The last fun I've got is Bound for Nowhere. Bound for Nowhere, but the finish line first. <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah, no. I, <laughs> is I, that a uh, Combination, yeah. <laughs> the combination of things. So fun versus fact, we'll see how we get on. Perfect. That's all our tips for Friday and Saturday's meetings. But you're going to be there, aren't you? Yeah, I'm absolutely. Sure. <laughs> Cheering them along. But go for the fun. If you want to go for the fact, you might win more. <laughs> Thank you.